Hi guys, today I'll be talking about the Dranquin Coliasis, which is most commonly known as the Guinea worm disease. So, uh, the Guinea worm disease is a parasitic infection caused by the parasite Dranquinculus medinensis, and this disease is uh, most prevalent in uh, third world countries, especially North Africa. This is primarily due to the inaccessibility of healthcare and other obstacles that prevent the uh, availability of a clean water source where the, uh, where the disease is uh, originated from. So this is considered a serious illness even though it's not fatal because it prevents, presents these poor countries with uh, such a heavy economic burden of finding health care and like treatment and uh, antibiotics. But uh, once this disease is contracted is pretty much one is pretty much disabled so they cannot carry on with their job or support their family so uh, and since a majority of the infected are children their parents must reduce their income in order to uh, care or treat for the child and uh, furthermore these these third world countries also deal with a variety of other diseases such as malaria and polio background. Uh, through the support of the Carter Center, which was founded by U.S. President Jimmy Carter, uh, much progress has been made to bring about the eradication of the uh, guinea worm disease. Um, as of 2014, evidence shows that the disease was on the is on the verge of eradication, and only 126 cases were reported from these African countries at that time compared to uh, 3.5 million that were reported in 1986 when uh, the Carter Center was founded. Um, this would make, eradication of this disease would make it the first parasitic disease to be eradicated and the third disease in total to be, to be eradicated. So uh, how is this disease contracted? Uh, well, pretty much anyone is at risk from infection and as long as they drink water that contains the cyclops flea, which is a predatory crustacean that feeds on the, uh, the guinea worm larvae, they can contract the disease. And uh, it is because these third world countries, uh, they lack the resources to provide filtered water nationwide that is so difficult to eradicate this disease. So uh, the infection of the, of the uh, disease comes in three stages. And firstly, once the flea ingests the warm larvae, larvae, it then becomes a vector contained in said water source. This is the infective stage. Um, and once the flea is swallowed by a human, the flea perishes in the uh, stomach fluid, but releases the parasite, which then, um, which then par passes through the stomach and penetrates into this intestinal tissue where it can reproduce. It is the offspring that migrate to the body tissue in order to find an exit portal. So uh, once it exits, which can take up to a year, it then releases the embryos, which can number in the millions, back into uh, the water source, re repeating the cycle. Um. So uh, once ingested, the larvae are released and migrate to the body and uh, when it reaches this exit point, the emergence causes a painful burning sensation, which basically debilitates the, uh, the host, making them uh, completely immobile. So, um, and the worm can take up to four, 10 to 14 months to complete its journey to the surface of the skin. And victims of this disease have actually reported um, movement, noticing movement under the skin as the worm begins to exit and the size can range from 600 to 800 millimeters in length and 200 millimeters in diameter, causing extreme pain as it um, creates blisters and um, exits the skin. Um, the only treatments um, is by coaxing the blister in hot water or local water where it's and um, once the worm begins to exit, um, you can 
wrap the worm in a stick around a stick and slowly pull it out over the course of a few days, which can take up to a week. Um, and if, also, if the worm is ruptured during its extraction, it can cause a serious allergic reactions and increased inflammation and pain. But um, unfortunately, this method will complete the life cycle of the parasite and return the embryos back into the water source. Um, yeah. So, uh, and other ways for treatment are simply through pain medications, which include like aspirin and ibuprofen to reduce pain and inflammation. Also, like antibiotics can be used to um, prevent further bacterial infections. Um, for looking at prevention, unfor unfortunately, there is no vaccine to prevent the disease, and only care careful measures can be taken to prevent an infection. Uh, through the use of several strategies, the guinea worm disease can be prevented, such as drinking from protective water sources. Um, or because, or isolating the infected hosts from uh, contaminating water sources because once they're infected and are past the incubation period, they can they, they start to shed millions of larvae once they are submer once the blisters are submerged in water. So, um, also the use of filters or the treatment of larvicides, larvicides, which is uh, provided by healthcare services. Um, which is known as a bait, which will kill the water fleas. And also the further education of the, of the community about the disease can also help prevent um, further contamination and um, infection. Um, so in the current, uh, there's, there's been a drastic drop since the 80s and um, there has been a drop by more than 99%, which left only the countries of Chad, Ethiopia, Mali, and South Sudan to have reported cases in the last five years. And um, only 65% of infected persons are children, which is um, probably because in these terrible countries, the task of transport transporting water is uh, left to the children, which uh, creates a, creates contact or like higher percentage of contact with infected, possibly infected water sources. So uh, finally, eradication efforts uh, was through the, is primarily through the Carter Center, which began in 1986 and cooperated with the World Health Association Assembly and UNICEF to expedite eradication of drinking colitis. Uh, thank you.